Good day everyone. Today's video is just a quick tutorial of how to use another website that has UCR data a bit easier to manipulate, download, and use, especially for a class like the one I'm teaching now with Katie, is a introduction to secondary data. So never, nothing extremely uh, in depth other than trying to expose students to different types of secondary data sets within crim and criminal justice. So some of this is easier to use than others, just given file size, data knowledge, analytical skills, Keep in mind when this class is up and running as a regular course, it's gonna be a 2000 level, so more of a sophomore level. So at this point, most students haven't had research methods or stats. So we're trying to get exposure to data manipulation working in Excel, so really hands-on, just use in comfort with data. With that, I'm picking up from one of our prior videos and examples. We went through the UCR and downloaded data related to 2019, and we did table eight related to our violent crime. Keep in mind, this is not the Crime Data Explorer page that the FBI now runs. You can find that data, especially with the NIBRs. We'll go over that in another video if you want to download some of that. But really, this is what I'm talking about with the Crime Data Explorer. Traditionally, more people use kind of the historical data to capture multiple years. The good and bad of that is, it's they continue to change it, and some's better than others in terms of access and ability to easily download and use, say, for teaching purposes. With that, uh, Dr. Jacob Kaplan has made this a bit easier for people in general. Uh, if anyone's taking my class right now or has access to the box folder, I do have both of his UCR and Nibers books in there. If you're in my spatial class, I did put in the Crimes by the Numbers. These are great reads on both UCR data and Nibers data. I'd recommend if you're trying to get used to it, coming around to maybe using one of these data sets, it's a great read for an understanding of the data sets, what you can do, what you can't do, a good deep dive before you go into analysis or downloading data. Highly recommend it. And of course, they're OER, so you can open access them just by clicking on them. But in class, what I covered was using his data tool and primarily his crime one here. And more so, he does a lot in this already. So great uh, visualization with the numbers below to see where they're coming from. What I had students do was download the United States as a whole for the rates and then recreate this visualization here in Excel. So just simply trying to recreate what Dr. Kaplan's done here. So if we go in and obviously if you want to choose by state and agency, you can do that. I've done it honestly many times for Little Rock, Arkansas, and then I just update with the more recent years that I capture from LRPD or the city and I do it that way. Now it's a lot easier since I have it downloaded. But with that, we can go to the United States you see, it gives us our national estimate here. We can choose a specific crime type. I'm gonna go ahead and do the index for violence, and I wanna make it our rates. With that, it gives you essentially what the table would look like when we download it in Excel, which is what the information we need. We need the year, we need the rate, and obviously it's just the US national estimate. So other than that, we're pretty good to go because it's we're not looking at specific agencies or comparing that way. The cool part is you can download with one click. If my computer lets us, there we go. Desktop, let's go to courses. Fall 21, secondary data. And let's just put uh, US crime rates. And that's going to download as a CSV file. Again, as that downloads as a CSV, I always recommend reopening and down, or once it does download, saving as an Excel workbook, just getting the habit of you keep your original file, but now you have a working one to where if you ever do make a mistake, we're all humans, so we have errors at certain points, we have the original data set we can come back to and work from if we need to. Give that a second to load. I thought this would be quicker since I exited out of ArcGIS, but it's still being a bit slow this morning. All right, it's chugging along slowly. There we go. So as you can see, again, I'm gonna click up here in the top left and then double click which auto fits the information based on the largest cell per column and you can see what we're working with here what we're interested in what we kind of discussed was just displaying the 
violent crime rate with our year so we can make a line chart that way. There's a couple ways you could do it. One thing I'm going to do is just change the title up here. Oops, forgot to resave it though. There we go, save as. You can see it still keeps it as a CSV and all I wanna do is change it to a workbook. And there we go. And what I wanna do at this point before I change some of the names is just rearrange or sort based on year and I want the year to start with the earliest one. There we go, so 1960. And I'm just gonna change this to say violent crime rate. 100k. So it lets me know that it's the violent crime rate per 100,000 population. We can see our population estimates here. Now you can select this a couple different ways. You can select the whole table and once it's added to the chart itself, go in and select the data. The other couple ways are to just grab the columns that you're interested in. So I have that one that I'm going to hold control and grab this one and highlight that up. And if I go to insert now, oh, my computer is not liking this video today, and go to charts, and here I want to do a line chart. You can do recommended, and typically it bases it off the data you have highlighted already. Sometimes it's pretty spot on. Uh, every now and then it's exactly what I mean, but I just get in the habit of I know I want to show a specific type of chart. So I went into just the line charts, selected the first one. And it's going to generate here the information we need. As you can see, I had a couple of issues when I was just bringing the data in, so this isn't shocking. So what you want to do, obviously it's not correct. You can see our violent crime rate, but we actually want our year to be our x-axis here. So I'm going to go into select data at the top, and I want the year to be our horizontal, our axis, Oops, I thought I could do one at a time, so I'm gonna switch that back. On select year, then I'm just gonna edit this axis here. And the label range is that. Oh, I didn't select it all. Oops, sorry about that. So I'm selecting just the years 1960 to 2018. There we go. We don't have year checked over here anymore, so it's only going to display our violent crime per 100,000 citizens, residents. Now you can see it looks, and I'll pull it back up to Kaplan's. It looks very similar to that. I'm going to show you a couple things if you want to change up your chart type. As you can see, my Excel even has the dark uh, parts to it, or the dark theme itself. So not shockingly, I do that in a lot of my layouts as well. If you want to change your color scheme, it gives you options here. You can go in individually and change it as well. The layout, if you want your titles, typically this is something you will want to add to it. So you can add your axis titles Y and X, and then put the actual violent crime rate to the right over there. You can see the different options within it. Let's see. And I apologize, my puppy has a squeaker toy right now and is deciding to play with that at this moment. Let's find one that has, there we go. So it actually allows you to change the title itself. We know this is year, so yes, we could go in and put the year below it. Here though, if we wanna change the access title, we can just treat this like a text box, That's essentially what it is, just turned on its side. This is just our violent crime rate per 100,000, just so we know where it, it is on that. Even though we have it up here and this is our line by year, you could change the name of that if you wanted to. And you probably noticed when I was hovering over the different layouts, you can add different call out or data labels. The data labels are going to reflect each year and the corresponding crime rate for that year. So you probably saw it gets pretty messy when you add them in. When you have a smaller graph or not as many years, this could be valuable to see. It's just tough to distinguish some of this since it's all in here. You can get fancy and change the layout of them when you get into the chart area or the 
data label properties. You can change all of that and you can mess with that a little bit. It's just tough when you have this many years over time. But if you want to do a comparison now, so keep in mind this is what we have for our violent crime per 100,000 starting from 1960 to 2018. And this demonstration hands on to kind of show how you can see the crime peaks, the valleys, and then the high peak in the 90s. And where it starts to come down into the early 2000s and even current day. With that, let's pull up Kaplan's again. And then you can see here, we're seeing a very similar layout to it. Keep in mind, this is just a smaller one compared to what I had pulled up. But we're seeing similar parts to it. It's just more drawn out. But we're able to recreate that in Excel with data that's provided from the UCR that Dr. Kaplan made much more accessible for people in the public and especially for a class like this where it's an introduction to secondary data. Obviously there's other data types that he has in here. I recommend going through them, taking a look at them. Some are pretty cool if you don't have exposure to. With that, this is just a quick tutorial video on how to use some of the UCR data from another site. In the future we'll go over the National Archives of Criminal Justice Data, also ICPSR since those two are linked together. But this is just one good source of that. If there's any questions, please reach out.